this is really a, a quote that I, that I really love, and I came across it several months ago, um, and it just has really stood with, stood, stuck with me. It says, prayer is you speaking to God. Pondering is you listening. In our prayers, we are literally having a conversation with God. Just as, just as we speak to each other and talk to each other, we talk, we pause, we listen, we talk, we listen. It, it is a literal conversation with our Heavenly Father. The today's lesson is number 22, um, a commandment, excuse me, prayer is a commandment and a blessing. So first, let's find out how praying is a, co is a commandment. Um, there's two scriptures that really make this point very well. If anyone has them, I would ask if you could read it. If, if you don't, I can read it. It's in Moses chapter 5, verse 8. Anybody have that by chance? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. Verse eight. Thank you. <clears throat> Wherefore thou shalt do all that thou doest in the name of the Son, and thou shalt repent and call upon God in the name of the Son forevermore. Great. Thank you. Um, Joseph Smith says in the, in the lesson, Joseph Fielding Smith says, I wonder sometimes if we realize how important this command really is. Then in Doctrine and Covenants 68.33 it says, And a commandment I give unto them, that he that observeth not his prayers before the Lord in the season thereof, let him be had in remembrance before the judge of my people. Why do you think the word season was used in this scripture? Why do you think he calls it prayers in the season thereof? Does anybody have any thoughts on that? <laughs> um, thankfully, Joseph Fielding Smith kind of <laughs> sums it up for us. Um, who did I give number one to? Thank you. Some of us may have the idea that the season of prayer is when we arise in the morning and when we are about to retire at night, when our work is done, and that there is no other season for prayer, but I say unto you that the season of prayer is always. Thank you. The word season, then, is universally used to describe in season or at any and all times of your life. To further explain what he means, Joseph Fielding Smith quotes these scriptures in Alma. And first, I want to give you a little background. Um, we read in the Book of Mormon the word of Amulek to the poor uh, Zoramites who had departed from the truth, and having been cast out of their synagogues because they were poor, and feeling that they could only pray one at a time as they ascended into the Ramiumptum, as it is called, they knew not what to do. So Amulek taught them. So real quick, just to um, kind of talk about the Ramiumptum um, a little bit. There's actually in the Book of Mormon stories, there's some great pictures and, you know, kind of brief story, which, is, which really is very good. Um, the Zoramites had once belonged to God's church, but they became wicked and began worshiping idols. Um, the Nephites wanted to keep the Zoramites from joining the Lamanites. So Alma went with some other missionaries to preach the word of God to the Zoramites. These missionaries were surprised and upset how the Zoramites were worshiping in their churches, churches called synagogues. In the center of the church, the Zoramites had built a high platform called the Ramiumptum. There was room for only one person to stand at the top. The Zoramites took turns standing there, reaching toward heaven and loudly reciting the very same prayer. In the prayer, the Zoramites said, God does not have a body. He is only a spirit, and there would be no Christ. 
The Zoramites thought God had chosen only them to be saved in the kingdom of heaven. They gave thanks for being his favorite people. After each of the Zoramites prayed, they went home and did not pray or talk about God again for an entire week. So these missionaries were sent to teach them, and the things that they taught to them are in number two, and please, thank you. Yea, cry unto him for mercy, for he is mighty to say, Yea, humble yourselves and continue praying to him. Cry unto him when ye are in your fields, yea, over all your flocks. Cry unto him in your houses, yea, over all your household, both morning, midday, and evening. Yea, cry unto him against the power of your enemies. Yea, cry unto him against the devil, who is an enemy to all righteousness. Cry unto him over the crops of your fields, that you may prosper in them. Cry over the flocks of your fields, that they may increase. But this is not all. Ye must pour out your souls in your closets, in your secret places, and in your wilderness, yea, and when you do not cry unto the Lord, let your hearts be full, drawn out in prayer unto him continually for your welfare, and also for the welfare of those who are around you. And now, behold, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, do not suppose this is all, for after ye have done all these things, if ye turn away the needy and the naked, and visit not the sick and afflicted, and impart of your substance. If ye have, if ye have, to those who stand in need, I say unto you, if nothing, I say unto you, if ye do not anything of these things, behold your prayers in vain, and availeth you nothing, and ye are as hypocrites who deny the faith. Okay, thank you. That did come directly from the lesson. I probably should have pointed that out to you first. Um, in that passage there, which comes from the scriptures in Alma, we find a lot of things about prayer that hopefully if I write these down will kind of help you open your eyes to the, the power of prayer. So if we take this um, passage that she read and we divide it into three sections... Okay, so we're, we're going to, I'm going to make a quick list of when, where, and what are we told to pray about. When, um, in the very beginning, it says you are to continue to pray, you are to continue in prayer. Sorry, I'm going to give you my short versions of stuff. Where we started, yes, 34.18. That's fine. Thank you. Um, he also mentioned that we are, when is, hope you guys can see this, morning, midday, and um, later on down there he says, let your hearts be full. So your heart needs to be full of prayer. So sorry about this. <laughs> okay, the last it says you need to be continually drawn out in prayer. So here's my shorthand. Okay, so that kind of covers the the when. The where he talks about. Um, sorry, I'm going to be short again. Cry in your field. Cry in your houses, in your closets, secret places, and in your wilderness. That's kind of interesting. Nesses, he says. Okay. So, hope you guys can see that. The what... He's giving us what what are we to pray for? Um, he wants us to pray for mercy over our flocks, our household. Pray against 
the power of your enemies. Crops in your fields. Flocks in your fields. <laughs> Sorry. Um, for your welfare. Here's a little bit of cheating here. And those around you, the welfare of those around you. And against the devil, which I thought was interesting too. Okay, so sorry. Um, whether you can really read my writing or not, basically from those verses you get a pretty good glimpse of what we are asked to do and what prayer can do for us. The um, kind of the clenching thing to all of this is that if we do this and say, bring those together, do not suppose that this is all. This is not an exhaustive list. This is a list of a good place to start. Some of the things may not seem applicable to us, but they are in our day. All of these things can whatever your wilderness is, whatever your flocks are, whatever your household is, praying against the devil, praying for our leaders. Um, and then he goes on to say that if you are not charitable, all this prayer is vain and is availeth you nothing. So we are commanded to pray for our benefit, the benefit of others, to help us through this life. Um, in number three, who has number three, um, we're going to answer the question, why are we commanded to pray? Thank you. Prayer is something that humbles the soul. It broadens our comprehension. It quickens the mind. It draws us nearer to our Father in heaven. We need his help. There is no question about that. We need the guidance of his Holy Spirit. We need to know what principles have been given to us by which we may come back into his presence. We need to have our minds quickened by the inspiration that comes from him. And for these reasons, we pray to him that he may help us to live so that we will know his truth and be able to walk in, it, in its life. That we may, through our faithfulness and our obedience, come back again into his presence. Thank you. That, too, has quite a list of needs um, and reasons to pray. We could, again, take that and, and do another list. And yet, again, that list is not even comprehensive. Our reasons to pray are innumerable. We do need his help. The command is really for our benefit. I, when I opened this lesson, I thought to myself, really, it's a commandment to pray. I, I knew that, but it just sort of kind of opened my eyes to it. That I'm commanded to pray. He, he wants to hear from me. It's important that he hears from me. Um, moving on to section three, we read, um, it's titled, All We Do Should Be in Harmony with the Expressions of Our Prayers. Now, I thought Tammy kind of hit it perfectly in the sacrament, in her sacrament talk, which I love both of those talks, by the way. And I was going to see if I wrote. So she said in there, um, to be in harmony with the expressions of our prayers, what she said is we need to show, our, show by our behavior what we believe. The expression of our prayers is outwardly seen by others. Others pick up on it. Others may not even really recognize that that's what they're feeling, but what, they, what we portray and what we, how we behave is directly in correlation with what we believe. And others pick up on it, whether you want them to or not. It's kind of the unwritten rule <laughs> that that's how things go. Um, in section three, he says, we should not pray merely with our lips, but in every act, in our conversation, in all that we undertake to do, we should try to carry out the expressions of our prayers and be in harmony with the thoughts that we declare to the Lord in our daily supplications. 
So let me ask you a couple questions to think to yourself, of the answers to yourself. Are we in possession of the spirit of prayer? Have we made it a part of our very being? This question you can answer out loud. <laughs> what can we do to improve in this area? What can any of us do to improve giving us um, the spirit of prayer with us? Does anyone have any thoughts or comments on that? Yes, please. Well, it just reminded me of the scripture we read earlier about how we need to uh, visit the sick and afflicted um, in Alma 34. And just, you know, help those around us. And by doing those things, we are having a prayer in our heart and having the spirit with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Very good. Any, anybody else want to add to that? Anybody? Okay. Yes, please do. As you know, Deb, I've really been studying the brother of Jared. And if we go back into Ether 2, verse 14, Heavenly Father chastened him for not calling upon him. So I, that to me was, I, that it was an eye-opener to me. I went, wow, yeah, we're commanded. As a matter of fact, he got on to the brother of Jared for not calling upon him. So really strong. Very good, thank so you. Sometimes we think when we need to go to prayer when we have a need. You know, when we're hurting, when we've got an issue. And really that's, that to me, if that's our natural man and that's, that's selfish. We need to be in constant prayer for others and for just praising Him. Absolutely. And, and kind of to piggyback on, on those two comments, when... Our when list has, doesn't say when you're sick, when you don't feel good, when you, when you need it. You know, there, there is nothing like that. It's continue, constant, you know, always in your heart, morning, day, and night. It's really never without that prayer. You have every reason to pray, um, whether for strengthening or to thankfulness. You know, we'll, we'll kind of get into that, too. So thank you for, for your comments. Um, number four, this in section number four, which kind of adds to what we just discussed and, and really goes along with this type, excuse me, this time of year and this season. <clears throat> in our prayers, we should pour out our souls in thanksgiving. How careful we should be to cultivate through the medium of a prayerful life a thankful attitude. I believe that one of the greatest sins of which the inhabitants of the earth are guilty today is the sin of ingratitude, the want or lack of acknowledgement on their part of the Lord and his right to govern and control. And I personally completely agree with that statement, and I personally have had struggles with his right to govern and control. Sometimes I want I think, think, boy, things are cruel. You know, how, how can you tolerate this? Or how can, how can these things become better? And that's an admission of my, of my own weakness there. But it, you, I can be thankful about that. At the same time, I can turn that around and say, I am grateful that I don't have to be in charge to some degree. I am grateful that he has all-knowing and all-seeing and the ability to take care of things that I can let him take care of it. And all I have to do is worry about me and my spouse and my children, you know, da, 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 da. so I am truly grateful for that. Um, this is the time of year um, where we are reminded to be grateful. And I have said before that I don't think it's by cho chance that Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then New Year is in the order that they're in. Thanks, thankfulness, gratitude precede all blessings, every single blessing. Always we need to be thankful. And if you can't think of anything to pray, you can certainly be thankful to pray about gratitude. And you always have things to be thankful for. Um, does anybody have any comments on that at all so far? Well, the thing that's amazing about gratitude is the more grateful you are, 
then the more things you have to be grateful for. It's it's a an amazing thing that happens. The more you acknowledge it, the more you see that you need to acknowledge. Absolutely. Yes. That's the kindness of our Heavenly Father. The more you do, the more He gives, the more you, you know, it's just a snowball effect. It's, it's amazing to me that the, the small things, the simple things He asks us to do bring such great blessings and, and so on. So, yeah. So, um, I would like to suggest just, just out of my own I really got a lot out of this lesson myself. I, it really kind of just sunk with me. I had a blessing a couple months ago, and in the blessing he said, Heavenly Father wants to hear from you. He needs to hear more from you. And I realized then that I had gotten out of the habit of praying as often as I had. And um, so when with that statement coupled with this lesson, I realized, boy, I, I, I got to step this up a little bit. I, you know, he wants to hear from me. He, we, he, we want to have this relationship. So I'm just suggesting, or going to throw out the suggestion that because of the time of year that it is, um, and we are beginning with Thanksgiving and gratitude, and it's, and it's all about these blessings that we just really talk to Heavenly Father, tell him how grateful we are. Thank him for these holiday seasons. Thank him for each other, for this building, for our relationships, for the opportunities that are ours. And I really believe that if you kind of focus on that, your holiday season could be dramatically different than it's ever been before. Um, moving on to number five. <clears throat> We should plead with Heavenly Father for all of our righteous desires. I'll, I'll just, I, sorry, <laughs> I'm just going to skip right to the first paragraph. I think it's the first paragraph. Um, we should plead with Heavenly Father for faith and integrity and for every godly attribute, for the triumph and success of His work for the guidance of his Holy Spirit, and for the salvation in his kingdom. We should pray for our families, for our wives and our children, for food and shelter and clothing, for business concerns, and for all of our righteous desires. So what, I want to just throw the question out, what are some specific righteous desires that you have? What are some things that you really want um, that you you know the Heavenly Father will grant because of your desire. Does anyone have anything they want to share? Yes, please. Maybe patience. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Yes, please. Um, I was in the lesson a long, long time ago, and I, I it was about charity and how we have to have charity to get into to live with Heavenly Father again. Um, and it kind of struck me. I was like, I don't feel like I have the opportunities to give charity. I just don't see them. And I started to pray for Heavenly Father to show me ways in which I could help and serve his children. And it's amazing what happened. I mean, things just started popping up all over the place. And it was to the point where I was like, how did I, how did I not think of that before? And I mean, and that was just a huge testimony building experience for me because you pray for that. And Heavenly Father is going, if, if it's right and what you need, he's going to show you. Absolutely. And he will open the floodgates. You know, that's kind of what you said. And, and praying for patience with our children and with each other, you know, he can literally make those things happen. And um, does anyone else have any, any other thing they want to add? Please. Thank you. Um, I pray to show me my weaknesses. It's really it's hard. It's <laughs> scary. It's really it scary. And I know there are times when I'm like, okay, I feel I need to pray for this, but I am scared to do it because, you know, temptation starts coming because I am weak in some areas, and there are areas that I, you know, personally need to work on. And you really have to have the faith to know that Holy Father will help you through that and that it is an um, opportunity to become closer and become stronger. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you very much. Does anybody else want to add anything? 
Please do. <laughs> Sometimes um, our heart desires, it takes a long time to see something from the top. Mm -hmm. That you just plead and pray for Heavenly Father. And sometimes they don't, they don't happen. And that's the hard part. But you just have to have faith that, that the Lord knows all. And he has, you know, the plan, so to say. And you just have to trust in him. Absolutely. Thank you. Very much. Anybody else want to? Remember the talk. It was one I just read, but it, it was just a very short piece in it where, where um, it said, if you could just see it like Heaven the Father sees it, you wouldn't question. And so, uh, you know, that's hard, but I think at times we just have to try to remember that. That even though he's not answering that prayer as quickly as we think, or in the way that we thought, in the way that we think he should, that he's seeing such a bigger picture. And if we could just see it from his perspective, we would probably agree. You're right. I agree with that too. Thank you. Anybody else want to add? You know, I think you know, um, as Alan as Alan said, if you had a bird's eye view. You know, getting to this age, I've learned a lot of things along the way, and one thing I have learned is um, that I have prayed for things in my life and been disappointed because, you know, I had to wait so long or this or that. But now, as I look back and I sort of have a bird's eye view from this age, I can see, oh, this had to happen, this, this. oh, it totally makes sense. But when I was in, in route, it was just exhausting and truly I, I gave myself that grief. I didn't have to, I wouldn't have had to go through that if it was me, you know, not trusting or trying to, trying to make these deadlines that I assigned to and things like that. So thank you very much for your comments. Um, I do want to refer everybody if you don't have this book, or if you do, I believe you can access it online, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, great, then. <laughs> on, um, there is a chapter in here, chapter 8. It's called Praying to Our Heavenly Father. If you just quickly read the first couple pages, it is astounding, the simpleness, but the joy of prayers. The um, And in there, they, they kind of had assigned it some different topics. They took prayer and said, why do we pray? What is prayer? When should we pray? How are they answered? Why should we pray? You know, so, so they kind of did the same sort of thing in a different route. But I just would, would recommend if you have a few minutes to, to look through this because it really gives some good insight into prayer. And it's very simply but beautifully expressed in there. Um, and finally, for the last part of this lesson, um, in the, the, the lesson title is Prayer is a Commandment and a Blessing. We need, we're going to now cover kind of the blessings part of prayer. And I want to read you the short chapter from, sorry, the short paragraph from a January 2013 New Era magazine put out a, an article called The Blessings of Prayer. And this is part of the article. It says, as you probably know, we are blessed if we keep the commandments. After all, the Lord gives us instruction so that we can have joy. But what does it mean to be blessed? Sometimes we may think of blessings in general, vague terms, that they really lose part of their significance. But every commandment brings a specific blessing when you live it. Heavenly Father has specific blessings set aside for his faithful children. And often we simply just need to ask for them and live worthily, excuse me, worthy of them. So I want to ask this question. I, I really loved that paragraph. Um, all we have to do is ask, what are some of the blessings that you have received as a direct result of prayer? Does anyone have anything? They want to do. Please say, <laughs> please, please, okay, please do. Um, 
when I found out my ex had cheated on me, <clears throat> Um, Sorry. I I pray like in its own way it was a blessing because I was able to become closer to my Heavenly Father because um, I live somewhere you know that we traveled a lot so mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot of people in the place that I lived so the relationship that I had with my Heavenly Father grew so strong and even though it was such a hard trial I I I wouldn't trade that for anything just because of the closeness that I had with my Heavenly Father and His blessing that He poured it out upon me um, through those times. My daughter was about three, two, two, three. She doesn't remember any of the bad times. She doesn't remember any of it. The only thing she remembers about it, me and Mom had cookies and milk every night before bed. Wow. So, Perfect. The Lord blessed us in so many ways, and, and I, I would never trade that for anything. Thank you. Thank you for that. Please. Yeah, thanks. Um, I guess they have hands to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. Because you, ask, you go and you ask questions, and I was, you know, I got blessed with the knowledge of the church, and then where to go, like after my husband started a car accident, what do we do from here? And, you know, when we turn out and father and pray, we actually got a plan laid out for us that, you know, if we didn't do that, we would have been stuck, still wondering, what are we supposed to be doing? Wow, that's great. Thank you. And yes, did you want to say something still? Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was listening to the question, and I think prayer is very powerful, and I think sometimes we don't, we, we may not, I don't want to say we don't, but sometimes we may not appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. I teach out of the prison, and uh, my ladies out there, have told me, you know, ways that they, when they were using or whatever they were doing, they got, you know, that eventually the animal <coughs> was prison. Um, they would, they mentioned several times that they, they had, they did pray, they, they pled in desperation. You know, somebody would hear them, somebody would help mm -hmm. them, and so many of them say, oh, it's a blessing to come to prison. And I, I, I kind of turn that around from, I'll say, so the event that you did brought you to prison. But the blessings came after the trial, if you will, of their own choosing. Sometimes, sometimes they were in a bad situation at a bad time, you know, that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I know that when we pray, and when I go out there and I pray to Father, please help me say the lesson or teach what they need to hear. You know, I may have a path in mind, but so many times using faith, the Spirit will guide me down a path. And as sister said, you know, we have a, maybe we don't have a path in mind, or maybe we do, and Lord's like, well, let's take a detour. And it ends yeah. up being the main road that we've been on anyway. Yes. And you were actually. Yes. Like, yes. I, know, I, I appreciate the power of prayer that it gives us as well. Me too. Thank you. Well, well said. Thank you, everyone, for your comments. Yes, please. I just want to mark Feel good. Um, I've seen the blessings of prayer in my life just because it brings the spirit to me more. And I've been able to um, act on promptings more. Um, I had an experience in college. My sister and I were in college at the same time. And I just knew one day that she needed a call. She needed some extra love. And if I hadn't prayed that, smart, that morning and had a prayer in my heart, I don't know if I would have felt that love and that prompting to do so. Absolutely. And that actually is a perfect lead-in to what... I wanted to say next because I want to throw out there if you really think about this all blessings are a result of prayer all of them you prompted to call your sister I've prayed for other people someone else came to their home brought them cookie you know it's all a l l all are re are as a result of prayer someone's prayers someone's prayers what the sister has said is important. Yes, she had said her prayers. You know, what was on behalf of her. She was able to hear her sister to help her. But, and I know we don't walk around saying this, but sometimes <coughs> we get to be the answer to somebody's prayer. Absolutely. As the temple teaches us, we're saviors. We really are. And if we heed those promptings, we get to be the answer to someone's prayer. And it may not be that day. It may be, you know, years down the road even. We don't know. If we pray to be the kind of parent we want to be, we're but an answer to our children's prayers. You know, the, sometimes in marriage, if a wife says, oh, please let me be a good wife, 
how about we pray to be the wife that he needs us to be? And Absolutely. He is the husband we need him to be, not the husband we want him to be. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you. And and you know, it remind you, you kind of reminded me in my last word. I had a really good friend, and she gave we, she gave a talk in Sacrament, and she said um, she didn't realize that she was the answer to someone's prayer. Someone had been praying; they were alone, they needed someone to talk to, they were just feeling desperate, and she felt this prompting: go over to your neighbor's house and borrow a cup of sugar. That sort of seems unrelated, or so simple, but it, it's the truth of how prayers are answered. She just went over there and asked for a cup of sugar, and they ended up talking for two hours, and you know, and you can assume the rest. And it's so amazing to me how Heavenly Father truly has our uniqueness and our needs in mind, and He knows how someone can answer a prayer for us and how we can be the answer to someone else um, in that as well. Um, just in closing, I just wanted to write one more thing on, on this board, and, and it actually kind of makes me chuckle, so I'm just going to write it anyway. <laughs> we'll get all this later. Okay. Okay. You guys read that back there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I don't know if you guys can read that. Seven days without prayer makes one week. W E A K. It's true. Heavenly Father has asked us to constantly pray. Have a prayer in your heart, in your mind. You can. Um, pray in your car. You can pray in in public, silently to yourself. You can pray in a meeting. You you are unlimited in your capacity to pray. I just want to leave my testimony with you that I do have a very strong testimony of the power of prayer, and I have seen my mother's prayers directly affect myself, my children, and my siblings in profound ways. And unfortunately, I, I'm just grateful for him. And I thank you for your time and say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just come before the throne of sisters today, giving you thanksgiving and praise and glory and honor. We thank you for all of the blessings in our life. We thank you for the opportunity to come to our church, uh, to worship thee, to take the sacrament, to study thy word, and to fellowship with one another. We pray for all of those that are at home, ill, or just struggling. We pray that you would send the ministering angels to be with them, to comfort them, to heal them. We thank you for the upcoming week, and we thank you for the work of our hands, and we pray your blessing upon that, that we might be a blessing to others. We thank you for thy temple, and we so look forward to going. We say all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.